Can you guys hear me in the back? All right, so I know she said, don't make noise, but we're gonna break the rules. Can I hear some noise? Are you excited? Woo! All right. All right, so my daughter, who's here, Shivika, she's nine years old, and I have a favorite movie, and the name of the movie is Wonder. How many of you have seen the movie Wonder? How many of you think that's your favorite movie? I love this quote specifically because my daughter loves it and I love it together. It says, don't tell me that sky is the limit when I know there are footprints on the moon. So today is about being unstoppable. Are you guys unstoppable? Yeah. You guys unstoppable? Yeah. Awesome. By the way, I have a very um, important question to ask you. Before coming here today, and I don't know if any of you have worked with the Raspberry Pi today, but before coming today, how many of you thought Raspberry Pi was a dessert? <laughs> yeah, that's what I thought when I heard about that the first time. I'm like, what? What is a Raspberry Pi? But it's a mini computer that makes fun things happen. So I hope you're going to have a fun time working with those today. So today is be about being unstoppable. But let me tell you a little bit about who I am and who I work for. I work for a company called Cisco Systems. It's actually here in the Silicon Valley. How many of you have heard of it? Oh, there are actually a few people who have heard of it. Awesome. Well, Cisco is one of the companies, as I will tell you, that makes something very fantastic happen. Cisco makes your phone talk to the internet. So you can download fun videos or play awesome games. So Cisco is a company that was founded in 1984 by two uh, professors in, in Stanford, and they wanted to connect the world. They wanted to make one computer talk to another. How fantastic is that? And that led to a whole lot of products that Cisco makes. Cisco makes things called routers and switches and blades that go into computers and phones and all sorts of wonderful software that connects the world. You know what? We actually also put a router in space. So guess what? Astronauts need to talk to people on Earth too, right? So Cisco makes connections happen. And you know, today, at some point, you're going to see um, you know, computers doing wonderful things. So Cisco also helps connect the world in different ways where it makes machines talk to machines. Um, so let's imagine if there's an oil and gas area where people are going and actually trying to find out at what depth there is oil. Do you think it's a safe place for humans to be? Yes? <laughs> All right, well, it is not. So what we're doing is we're making machines go in there, talk to other machines and tell us how deep it is and how to actually get the oil out. So Cisco makes those kind of software that actually connects the world in so many different ways and it actually makes other businesses do business. Cisco is the company that does that, and I work for that company. What I get to do for that company and my job at Cisco is to actually dream and build new, new cool things that will help our customers. So we build a lot of software that goes into our products, and we run and operate, and we actually sell that software. I also get to work with engineers, awesome engineers from around the world. Because Cisco is a global company, so I get to actually talk to people around the world and you know, work with them. So one of the pictures I have here is actually me in one of the hackathons that I do, which is a global hackathon, where a lot of engineers from all over the world come together and they are dreaming up new products and they're dreaming up new solutions. 
So this was taken in the Paris office. So I get to actually travel the world in my job. That's awesome. I also get to um, solve problems using technology. It's very important because technology is one of those amazing things that is changing how we solve problems. So I get to do that as part of my job. And I think that's awesome. But the fun doesn't stop there. Because what I also get to do is I actually get to build programs like what the program that you're participating in, in Cisco. We've built a program called Girls and Boys in STEM and Leadership, where middle schoolers like you come to Cisco from all around the world. And they get to actually work on some projects together. So I, as in technology, as a you know, engineer, I get to actually do all those fun things. I work with nonprofits who work in education. So I am not just an engineer. I am somebody who I bring my entire self to work. I can have fun, hang out with cool people, make cool things, talk to people around the world, you know, solve problems for other, for other um, folks. So that's a fun job to have. But let me, think, let me ask you guys, how many of you thought uh, you know, that I knew when I was in middle school that I was going to have that fun job? How many? Just guesses. Did anybody know that I exactly had it mapped? I knew exactly what I was going to do. School, college, get a job, land up in Cisco, have fun, talk to people, travel around the world. No. That's how life works. You don't know. You know, where, you know, I never knew my picture was going to be on top of Cisco's you know, external news, pe people talking about the work that I've done. Never knew that. Could not, could not have predicted. What I wanted to probably do was be an artist. I'm still an artist. This, this, this sketch is actually mine. You know? And I knew that I was not going to be an artist good enough that people would pay for it, but I was nevertheless an artist. And being a creator, it was an awesome feeling. But that, I get to bring that to work today, too. I'm an artist at heart, geek by profession. I get to actually bring my creative side to work on a daily basis. But life is not always predictable, and it's not always in straight lines, right? So when I was you know, nine years old, I actually wanted to be a doctor. And it's a funny story of how, why I wanted to be a doctor. I had a cousin, a little baby cousin that was born, and I went to the hospital to see him. And I saw the nurses dressed up all white, and very poised, and they were helping people. And I thought that was the best profession in the world. And I told my mom I wanted to be a doc uh, nurse. She says, well, if you want to be a nurse, maybe you can study a little bit more and be a doctor. <laughs> and then you get to help people even more. So I, you know, nine years old, I didn't know exactly what it takes to be a doctor, but I thought it was a job that involved cool white coats, and I get to actually help people. So I wanted to be a doctor. Well, a little time passed, and I was in high school, and I did my first dissection, and I actually found something about myself. I can, I'm not a good person to handle blood, so I, <laughs> I, I don't think I was going to be a job for me. So I then thought what was going to be cool, cool, close enough is I wanted to be a microbiologist. So I, so I wanted to go and study microbiology because I thought it was really, really cool. And it also ha involved you know, learning about how to save people and lives and things like that. However, then the life, my life took another turn because I actually met my husband who was studying computer engineering and I actually thought was he, he made me believe that that was the best thing to do because it was the right way to help. You know, technology was changing, and it was going to help people in different ways. So I actually studied and became a computer engineer, and I actually um, joined. My first job was as a, a database administrator. And over the years, what I've done is I've actually moved in this career you know, from being, a, being in the technical job myself to leading teams of engineers and you know, being a technology leader is the progression that I've taken. But who knows 
where I move from here. But one of the things that, have, that has always stayed true through the time when I wanted to be a doctor at nine years old to now is there are a few things that have never failed, that have always been. I've always wanted to solve problems. I was a problem solver. I love solving puzzles even now, and that's something that has always stayed. I love, you know, the, the mathematical part of logic, you know, having clarity, and that has always stayed. I also wanted to make sure that my love for learning, you know, I love to read, and my love for learning was always there. And through my experiences, what I've seen is life can throw you curveballs, but your perseverance is what takes you forward and always continues to keep you motivated. So, you know, it's been a fun ride so far, and, you know, there's more stuff to do ahead of, ahead of me. But I want to take those, I want to share those values with you because I think each one, each and every one of you here have that in you. So who, you know, and your life is shaped by many people, many role models that take you and give you the inspiration, give you the spark to move forward. My first inspiration was my mom. I call her the mathematic, uh, mathematician because she, at a very early stage in my life, she inculcated the love of mathematics in me. She made me realize that it was amazing to be able to um, you know, take a problem and solve it. And I um, it was very interesting. Uh, I'll, I'll share with you guys the story. I was in fifth grade, and as any fifth grader, I was you know, more interested in playing outside, having fun, and doing sports and things like that. And uh, at the end of fifth grade, you know, I got my results and my math scores were actually down. Was, uh, you know, I would say, you know, I probably scored like a C in math. Being the daughter of a mathematician, you know, I saw the, my mom standing in front of her peers going like this. And that was the moment when I knew that failure from was not an option. Failure is, you know, regardless of what I do in my life, studies are important. Regardless of what I do in my life, I need to make sure that I receive a good education. And, you know, I studied hard, and the next year I actually topped in the whole school. And it wasn't, it wasn't about just, it wasn't just the fact that my mom was a, a role model for me, but the fact that our parents are putting in a lot of effort to make us move forward in life, they're giving us the opportunities, they're making us actually believe in who we are, it was important for me to make sure that I did my best. So it was a big inspiration for me to have a mother who was herself so accomplished, but at the same time, she was ready to put in the effort to help me be the person who I am. So any. You know, I, I don't know how you guys um, look for role models, but what are the role models that you have? Does any of, are any of those people role models for you? So who's a role model for you? Who's a role model for you? Do you have a role model? Do you have somebody who inspires you? A lot of people will, will say that. Go ahead. Stephen Curry and Steve Jobs. What is it that you like about Stephen Curry and Steve Jobs? Awesome. Anyone else has anybody here, or, or maybe somebody who's not even here? Go ahead.
speak up a little bit. Successful engineer. Uh, and he changed the world. These are awesome qualities. These are amazing qualities for you to aspire to. Do you have any role models or ins people who you in get inspired by that are close to you? A friend, a teacher, a parent? Ms. Kennedy, your teacher? Yes. Teachers are amazing role model. Oh, that's a wonderful example. Uh, your peers who get better grades than you are people who inspire you. Inspiration is everywhere around you. And we don't have to necessarily just look at the famous people. It's people around all, everywhere. Every day you inspire each other. You want, you know, you, the, the, the dedication, the effort that you're putting in can inspire somebody who's sitting next to you. That's uh, really a good example. So people who inspire us all have tremendous qualities, but there is one common thing. What's a common thing that they have? Uh, they dream big. So the very first Girls and Boys Leadership Program uh, year that we ran, there was, a, there was a guy named Miguel in the cohort. We gave everybody a project and said, hey, think of your dream job and think of how you would want to represent yourself on the first day of your job. Everybody, there were about 60, 70 kids, everybody drew a picture of themselves. They talked about who they want to be on the first day of their job. There was this one guy who actually drew an office, and I actually asked him, I said, Miguel, what is this? Where are you in this picture? He says, this is the office for the employees that I'm going to have. And I said, Miguel, that's an awesome thing. What do you want to do? He says, I want to open a real estate company that helps people get affordable housing. And I said, well, tell me more. And he's a, he's a seventh grader talking about opening a company and creating affordable housing for people. I said, tell me more. And he actually talked about the dream that he has with his dad because of the fact that they lost their house to, um, to a downfall that his dad had to go through. And his dream is to not, not let any other kid ever have to go through that. And I actually got inspired. So you don't have to be a grown-up to inspire a younger, um, younger child or uh, somebody who's younger than you. It can actually be the other way around. You can have big dreams that inspire us. You, each one of you today, when you leave today, you can have a dream that can inspire us as grown-ups. But it just takes a lot of courage. And I think the courage and conviction that you have can actually change the world. The other thing that these people that we look up to have in common is that they take a chance, take a risk. So there was a story that my um, aunt used to tell me when I was little was this fisherman who would daily go to the next of the river and stand there and he would start thinking and just you know come back home empty handed. People ask, like, what's happening? You're not catching any fish. He says, I'm going there assessing the depth of the river. So he wanted to know. Every day he would go walk up. He would look at the river, try to see how deep it is before taking a step in and coming back empty handed. And the other day, he had just a guy who's standing next. He jumped into the river, caught a few fish, came out. It is a very important story in my mind. It was when I was little, it actually reflected something for me. And I always remember it. The reason being, 
you will not know what lies ahead of you until you take that leap, until you take that jump, until you actually find out the depth of the river. You won't know how many fish are in there. So it is important that you take a risk, you take a chance, but all of these folks that have, even Stephen Curry, right, takes a chance every day going on the court. He may score, he may not score. He doesn't know. He has good training, so maybe the chances are higher, but there are any, any times that he's like gone to a game and he's not had a good, good game? He's had that, right? So taking a chance, stepping on the court, showing up is most important. And each one of them have done that. And there are all sorts of heroes in our lives that show up every day. Even your parents show up every day, every morning, regardless of how, you know, how little of a sleep they've had in the, the night before. They would show up every day. And that's very important for you. When you are going to school, show up every day, take that next step, and make sure that you're um, ready to dream big. And the last thing, which is extremely important, common in everybody who's inspired us, is they move forward. Every step doesn't make, matter how big it is, is forward. Doesn't matter if you're taking small steps or if you're taking big leaps. You're moving forward and it's extremely important. And every hour that you've spent making your dream come true is step forward. So today when you're coming here and you're talking about um, raspberry pies and, and actually getting to learn, it's a step forward. It's teaching you things that you will learn, you will use in the future as well, right? So how many people today took a step forward? All right, just two? Oh, few here? Oh, very good. Wonderful. Wonderful. Awesome. All of these steps are going to count. So li uh, let me do one quick exercise with you guys. So it's going to start with you. If you can imagine it, you can, you know, dream it. If you can dream it, you can become it, right? So I'm going to give you guys 30 seconds to actually dream big. Think about one thing that you want to dream about that's going to be big that you want to do. And then you get to actually share it with all of us. And I want to hear some really amazing dreams, something really fun that will potentially maybe change the world, or at least change the trajectory of your life. So 30 seconds. Who's ready to share? Go ahead. Stand up, please. Yeah, you can. I want to talk in a microphone. Robots. That's awesome. So you want to change the world using robots. That's awesome. Anybody else ready to share? I want to be in the I'm a, I want to be in the NBA. NBA. Awesome. Okay. So, how How about anybody on this side? You don't have a dream? You have a dream? <laughs> Go ahead. Go. 
All right. All right, Shivika, you want you have a dream, okay? You want to be an astrophysicist? Okay. That's good. That's awesome. All right. Well, I think it is extremely important to think about that dream because every step you're going to take forward is going to help you achieve it. And yes, you may have squiggly lines getting to the dream, but you will be moving in that direction. And it's very important for you to um, dream big because those are the people that if you have a dream, that's what helps you, you know, be the person who's making an impact in the world. So also, all these people, when you've made your big dreams happen, then you will be with a picture somewhere who's, somebody will be getting inspired by you. Each one of you are inspirational already. If you actually just let, you know, um, let your dreams shine, but how will you inspire others? How will you achieve that big goal, the excellence that helps people get inspired by the work that you're driving? So what I want you to do is leave here not just thinking that you've built, um, you know, you learn about a computer program or you've built something on a Raspberry Pi, but I want you to leave here thinking about how you inspire others, how you're going to dream big, and how you're going to take every step that you, uh, apparently I cannot actually work this, that every step that you take from here on is going to help us make this world a little bit better. So we have a few minutes for questions. So if you do have a question, make sure you raise your hand, and one of us with the mics will come and bring it over to you so you can ask. Sorry? Um. When did you officially start working for your company? So for Cisco, I started working 12 years ago, but I have been in the industry for over 20 years. I worked for Oracle in the past and uh, many other companies before that. Oh, well, um, I went to school to study and become an engineer, and I actually did more on the database side. I actually studied more on the how to manage databases and how to actually write the database code and things like that. Well, the good news is, since all of you are being so shy right now, is that she is going to hang out with us during lunch. So any questions you may have, you can ask her then. Now to wrap it up, I do have one final question for you. So, you know, one of the things that you talked about was the fact that you had so many different ideas about what you wanted to be growing up, starting with being a doctor up to what you do now. So what last words of advice do you want to give these students today about that and about how important it is to be passionate about what you do and it's okay to, you know, change? Yes. Well, you know, I will tell you that um, growing up is a process of learning who you are and what's going to make you happy. Um, just like I wanted to be a doctor, but I learned that I cannot handle you know, trauma or bodily injury on anybody, and I would probably be a very bad doctor. Because you, you don't want to go to a doctor who's crying herself, right? So, um, you know, uh, and then as you move forward, you get to learn what you like, what you don't like, what makes you happy, what you're good at, and you will pivot. You will move, 
you know, you will change your direction. But I think the fundamental um, aspects of moving forward are important. It's important to make sure that, you know, whatever you do, you are good at. You know, you do it with full heart. You put yourself in it. And you can achieve excellence. And it's important to make sure that that is one thing that you keep. You know, even as a student, you know, I, you know, always took my studies very seriously. I uh, wanted to, you know, from that five, when I was five year old and there was a turning moment in my life when I couldn't see my mother not being proud of myself, me. I actually, you know, wanted to do her proud. I wanted to make her proud of who I am. But it, tur it turned the switch in me to wanting to not just make my mother proud, to be proud of the work that I do. I wanted to be the student that my, you know, that, you know, represented my teacher's ambitions. And I wanted to be, I, I'm still a person who works uh, with the same passion in my job. I bring myself to work on a daily basis with the same passion and I really enjoy the work that I do. So it's important that as you find your way as you find who you are and what you like and what you bring to the table and how you as an individual can change the world, it's important to bring your passion to, to every day, to every activity. Even today, as you're listening in, you're bringing yourself here. You're giving your time. You're making yourself available for new experiences. It's extremely important to have that.